you can eat whatever. You might be vegan. You might be vegetarian. Maybe you want um, tofu sliders. Is that what they eat? I don't know. But the creative system is broken. In my opinion, the whole system's broken. Going on Flickr, which was like my first kind of social media platform before anything else existed. Me too. You know, after I had already kind of done all this internal work in therapy and, and, and you know, and deep exploration, um, Oh yeah, ah, uh, the yes. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, this is the first time you will see my face, I think, in this vlog, or the first time I've talked to you, at least, in this vlog. Um, it was meant to be a monthly vlog, and so far you've seen the first week of the month, the month of November, and now this is the last week of the month of November. The middle two weeks, um, I was just constantly painting, and it was all stuff that I couldn't show you, and usually I will try to, like, you know, if, if I'm doing that, I will often try to film kind of like a different angle or slightly farther away or whatever. But these ones had a really intense um, legal agreement around them. So I, I was nervous <laughs> just to risk showing anything. So yeah, there's nothing the past two weeks. Um, hopefully I'll get better at this monthly vlogging thing. But um, thinking back to the first week of the month, what you will have seen. Um, yes, that was... Um, shipping, packing and shipping all the stuff for my studio sale, which um, went really well, thanks to all of you. Um, there were a few things that were unsold and I have a big pile of stuff that um, I'm calling the burn pile. It is the burn pile that will be burned at some point um, in 2020, 2021, I mean. Um, thank goodness this year's almost over. Uh, and I will show you guys that stuff, not today, but we'll, we'll have another video where I, where I show you the burn pile and, um, yeah, so, uh, I shipped off all of the stuff from the studio sale that was, uh, I, I was going to say more work than I expected, but no, it was really pretty much exactly what I expected. And I had, uh, my friend Christina helping me, which was great. Otherwise it never would have gotten done just in those two days. Um, yeah, you artists who just do tons of, of, um, shop stuff and shipping and all of that, like that is, I respect you because it is a lot of work. And if I was going to do that regularly, um, at that sort of scale, it would just need to be basically like my entire life, like the main purpose of, um, that would need to be the main goal. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I, I, maybe I'll show you the studio later, but it's still kind of like a bomb in here. I still haven't cleaned up because I went right from that to hustling on these deadlines. And then this week is kind of a catch all because it's Thanksgiving week. So I just have two days, um, today and tomorrow, um, in the studio. Um, and I have to do a little bit of editing, um, like editing and illustration of something, some changes, some additional changes that came from a client. Um, have to do that. I have to um, find a bunch of reference images. So that's one thing I thought I might show you guys um, and kind of talk through a little bit, finding reference images um, for like when I'm going to use multiple images, which is pretty frequently what I do. So yeah, I thought I might talk through that. And what else? The, the rest of this week, honestly, is just kind of trying to wrap my head around what is coming next, like what's coming in the month of December and January, and kind of trying to figure out what I need to do to finish out the year. Um, thankfully, it has continued to be busy work-wise um, in terms of client work. That's been great. I'm really thankful. Um, and something else I've been working on this whole month while I've been away, while I've kind of taken a little bit of a break from um, from YouTube, is trying to get some better systems in place so that my studio assistants can help me more effectively. Uh, when I 
uh, when I decided to do that, when I decided to take on a couple of studio assistants, I knew it was going to be a learning curve for me, um, probably even more so than, than for them, uh, because I haven't ever had help people help me in this way before. So I, I knew that I was going to have to figure that out and it has, um, yes, it has been, it has been pretty much what I expected in terms of being challenging to, to know how to let people help me well. And I don't mean in like the, like feelings where like, oh, I'm a control freak. It's so hard for me to let people help me. That is also true. <laughs> um, but more what I mean is just like, usually I'm the kind of person where I like, I do plan things out and I am very organized, but I, I don't like have, I have all of the systems for things kind of internalized. And I tend to kind of like, I don't, Think it's multitasking because i don't really actually believe that that truly exists but i think I, I tend to switch rapidly back and forth between different things and work on one thing when it is the most efficient and effective and then switch to another thing when that's more efficient and effective and um so i don't just have like a plan or a sequence of events for how all of these different things happen or um you know like stuff for social or stuff for youtube or um client correspondence any of those types of things that i'm having people help me with so, uh, yeah, uh, I've been trying to figure out more of those systems this month. And then, um, I think you guys will be watching this in the beginning of December. Oh, which that reminds me, I also want to show you some illustrations that were completed that are for a product that will have just come out when you guys watch this video. Um, I'll do that in a little bit, but, uh, yeah, this is scattered. Um, but <laughs> it's typical, uh, and we're just going to roll with it. So, uh, I think I'm first going to open up my computer, look at my to-do list for the week and kind of try to wrap my brain, um, around what I have to get done. Okay, so I am just in the process of looking for reference images and I thought I would um, go ahead and take you along with me to show you some of that process. Uh, I have talked about this before, but I get reference images all kinds of different ways. My favorite way is to take it, to take them myself, but uh, that is not always possible and it's gotten especially more difficult during the pandemic. Um, you know, in the past, especially for, for food stuff, I would just like go to the grocery store and buy things and take the pictures myself. But, um, I am trying not to go, I'm, well, I'm trying to avoid the grocery store as much as I can and do online orders and everything. Um, and then my other favorite way to get them is when the client, well, actually this might be my most favorite way actually is when the client just supplies the perfect reference images that they have the rights to and everything. Um, but it is pretty common that I will end up in a situation where um, the client gives me a brief or a mock-up or some sort of creative direction that indicates what they want the illustration to look like, but they don't have a specific image that I am able to work from. Or if I'm, you know, maybe they send me an image that they like, but if it's not clear to me that they have the rights to the image, or if they tell me outright that they do not have the rights to the image, then I source a lot of additional reference reference images as well. Um, so that I don't take anything, um, so that, so that, ugh, so that I don't draw too heavily from the image that they gave me, if that makes sense. So I'm starting out on um, 
my favorite first spot to start, my favorite first place to start, which is um, Pixabay. And uh, the reason I like it, sorry, I'm just cleaning up my desk here because you're about to see my desk. <laughs> it's a mess. The reason I start at Pixabay is because it is a public domain image site. So all the images that are on there are free for use. They're in the public domain. They're um, photogra the photographers who took them allow anybody to use them for any purpose without even crediting. Um, if you're gonna just use the image outright, the whole image on its own, like on your website or something, it would definitely be appreciated and, and appropriate to link back and credit but if you're using it for reference and you're making changes especially if you're looking at other images too credit isn't required so uh yes that's a great place to start there's other ones too there's morgue file there's what's the one that uh Uns unsplash i think that's one that a lot of people like and unsplash is nice it has really pretty images but since I am not necessarily looking for pretty images, I'm looking for functional images. Um, I don't check on uh, Unsplash or Upsplash or whatever it's called. I don't check there very often because um, the, the catalog is just a lot smaller. There's not as many images. And um, yeah, oftentimes the really beautiful images, especially of, of food, food photography are like, you know, they're kind of artfully cropped or they have a lot of... Um, a really shallow depth of field so I don't see all of the detail in the whole subject so there it's just not ideal but anyway I'm on Pixabay right now I'm gonna flip the camera around and um, and show you what I'm doing okay so here I am oops on Pixabay um, right now I am trying to source images for a cupcake illustration um, I'm not gonna show you guys the brief because I can't show you the brief but I can tell you I will be illustrating a a chocolate cupcake and the client has asked for the chocolate cupcake to have chocolate frosting. I'm going to try to talk them into having colored frosting because I think it will look better. Um, but yes, I am sourcing several different images. I've already gotten a few here. I snagged this one because I love this color purple here. This is the color that I would like to convince the client <laughs> to do uh, the frosting. I just think it'll have more contrast. It'll look nicer, all of that. And then also the shape uh, here is really good. I can I can read a lot of the um, the form and the structure. This would be a great reference to work from. Even if they want chocolate icing, I will be able to tell like enough structural information about the icing here uh, to to get a realistic look. And then I've also snagged this one. This photo on its own is really not ideal. It's way. There's like too much sharpness. I think that's what they've applied. I, I don't know. It's, it's highly edited. Um, but what it is good for is the color and particularly the color difference between the chocolate cupcake and the chocolate icing. So I'll be looking some at that. And I do like as well here, there's kind of like a little bit of a bounced light on one side that's a little purpley. So I think even if I can't talk them into doing the purple icing, I'll do the chocolate icing and then try to talk them into letting me have like a bounced uh, highlight on the side that has a little bit of purple in it. And then I snagged this one since um, this is going to be really good for, I mean, th this is beautiful on its own, but um, uh, mainly what I would use it for is the wrapper and the kind of overall perspective. We want that for, for this brief, we want something that's directly from the side. So, um, yeah, this is perfect for that. And then I'll, I'll be changing the color of this wrapper as well, but just for the structure, that's going to be really helpful. And I'm still continuing to look cause I'd like to find some, potentially some other frosting images. I'd love to find one that's kind of this sort of shape because I don't know whether they want something like this that has the really sharp piping or something like this. I don't know what the, I don't know enough about cakes to know what the difference is between those nozzles, but I know that that one's a lot sharper and more structured and this one kind of has like more of a softer look. So I'd love to find something like this that's from the right angle. I, I could use this, but it would definitely be easier to work from something that is from the direct side view. And then I'd also love to find something um, that has icing with maybe some like chocolate sauce on it um, almost like this but this isn't really very interesting looking so I, I think it would if I can talk them into doing the purple icing maybe if I uh, suggest having either chocolate sprinkles or like mini chocolate chips or chocolate drizzle or something like that on top they might go for it so I'm just kind of scanning the pages here and typically when I do this, I I don't like focus in on each picture. I kind of just like zoom through skimming what I see to 
see if there's anything that will um, work for me. This one is the right angle, but it, yeah, it's really not very uh, pretty. All right, here's, oops, oops, I just clicked on a keyword. Here's one that has the um, kind of drips that I was talking about, but I think it's not, um, not exactly what I would need here. Wow, sorry about the noise. Okay, here, is this gonna be helpful? This is kind of what I was looking for with the different shape of icing, but it's a bit too short. All right, this one I'm gonna grab because of the sauce. Um, it I would have to work quite a bit on it um, because obviously it's on kind of more of a rounded, um, I think it's ice cream, it's not even frosting that it's on, but what is helpful here is the, the pattern of the light and I can kind of see, get an idea for how, um, how the light would bounce off of it and would be able to create a little bit of a mental formula for that and then just change it depending on the, the shape or the structure of whatever is underneath. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this. Now looking at an image like this, you might think, what's the point? Why would you even need to look at a reference? That's so simple. But um, what I would point to are some of the particular nuances with the lighting. So the way that, um, that you have like light up here, shadow here, dark shadow here, bounced light right there. Those sorts of things are um, really difficult to just manufacture. And then all of these cool little irregularities here the little um, parts of the icing that aren't quite perfect. These ones up here too. All of that is um, much, well, it's much easier, more reliable to get it from a reference image. If I were to just draw this um, without looking at anything, without looking at this, it would end up being really formulaic. Okay, so I have to do that whole process again now for two other illustrations for two other subjects. Um, my eyes are so dry today. Uh, yes, have to do that for two other subjects. And then um, the other ones, uh, I don't think I'm gonna need to run anything by the client because I'm gonna basically just go off of what they said in the brief. But for these ones that I was just searching for, I also need to first send the client the references because I'm gonna I'm going to try to convince them <laughs> to go off brief um, with respect to having a drizzle. I think that'll look really nice. And then also having the colored icing. So I'll, I'll pull all those together. I'll probably put them in a PDF and just have like really obvious examples circled, like, you know, this kind of frosting, this color icing, this type of drizzle, that sort of thing, and then present it to them. So hopefully they will um, go with my idea. Um, all right, so I'm gonna go get the other references. Hey guys, uh, it is Wednesday afternoon, like 4.30. So I'm getting ready to head out for, um, not just for the day, but for the week, because tomorrow's Thanksgiving. Um, so this is going to be the end of the vlog, but before I wrap it up, I wanted to show you um, a project that I've been working on. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, I'm at Kendall Hillegas. Uh, you have already seen some of this stuff. I've shared some of it, I think, in posts. Yes, I have had some posts about it and then also several times in my stories. Um, but I've been working with a new packaging client this year and uh, they're called Safe and Fair and they do like allergy friendly, vegan, um, clean label, uh, which I guess is a term in the allergy community that means, what does it mean? It means that it doesn't have any of like the big nine ingredients, the big nine allergies. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm excited to do it because I love doing food illustration projects in general, whatever it is. But also I have, um, I grew up with pretty severe food allergies and I still have food allergies. Uh, and I remember what it was like to be the kid that couldn't eat any of the fun food uh, and had to, you know, like bring my own food or had to be really careful at birthday parties and stuff. So. I know the pain of that. And uh, this company was started by a father who has a daughter with food allergies. So uh, anyway, all that to say, uh, here is one of the examples of the finished pieces. 
well, the finished packages. Um, so this is for popcorn. They do all kinds of stuff. They do popcorn, they do granola, they do baking mixes. And eventually my work will be across the whole line, the whole range. Um, but right now it's just been out on the Honeycrisp popcorn and the pumpkin pie popcorn and the pumpkin pie granola. Um, but yeah, you can see like, there's an illustration, there's an illustration, there's an illustration. And then here in the bottom right, the cinnamon sticks and the apple, those are illustrations as well. So um, yeah, I did everything, every illustration that's on the package was done by me. There's some things that are photos, like the popcorn here, um, those are actual photos. But I thought I would show you, um, this is the only, <laughs> actual example like the pa the only actual package that I have with me because we've eaten the other ones um but yeah so there's that and um oh and this this part was illustrated as well this I don't know if you can see there's like a red um gingham checkered tablecloth thing underneath it uh so yes I illustrated the tablecloth <laughs> and um this one was done um for the pumpkin pie the pumpkin pie flavor as well so I'm going to show you some of the illustrations. All right. So here's the apples and the apple pie. And I don't know, well, this is like a bit overexposed for artwork. So maybe I should spin it around and show it to you a different way. But um, the, um, the smaller illustrations, the apple slice and the cinnamon sticks were already sent to a patron. So um, those I don't have to show you, but here's the pumpkin. And they wanted to do the pumpkin. They wanted it to be like a really vivid orange instead of like the darker orange that pumpkin pie usually is because they wanted it to feel like really fresh and um, vibrant. So we went for that brighter color and then I did the whipped cream um, separately just so it'd be easier to position. That's probably how you've seen it on Instagram is the two of them together. But um, if you've seen it on Instagram anyway, but this is how it was done. It was done separately. And then um, the pumpkin, and then this I thought you might find interesting, um, the little swirl thing here up at the top. This is how the swirl was done. So they, uh, we knew that they were gonna use it for a few different flavors. Um, we, we were gonna have chocolate, there was gonna be a lighter one. Um, so we decided to do a monochromatic version of it and then they just edited the color digitally. If it was going to be anything complex, uh, I would not want to do it that way because it wouldn't look good. But since it's just really pretty simple, um, it doesn't really hinder it that much having it be the single color. If they want to do something like the apples monochromatic, that would have not been possible to, to color them and have it still look really nuanced and, and beautiful. Um, but for something super simple like this, um, that is the route we took. I think I did one other illustration project where there was a monochromatic element that was digitally colored later. It's not super common, but I know some people do approach things that way. Um, and then now I'm gonna show you some illustrations that are for um, a flavor that hasn't come out. Well, no, it's just come out now. It will already definitely be out by the time you guys see this video, but I think it maybe just came out like today or yesterday. Um, and that is the Christmas flavor, which is, or the holiday flavor, which is peppermint, chocolate peppermint candy cane, or there's kind of a long name. I'll put it on the screen or somewhere. Um, but yeah, they, uh, we had a few different, just like kind of holiday elements. So did this, um, holly and, um, some snowflakes and they were meant to be kind of like the silvery, um, like icing sugar snowflakes that you would see. Um, and then the candy cane and they just wanted to have like a really classic kind of simple candy cane, but then to have, um, a little bow on it. And we decided to do the candy cane and the bow separately so that they could use them as individual elements. And then these chocolate curls as well. So, um, all of those were done for the chocolate candy cane popcorn. I don't have that one yet. Like I said, cause it just came out, but they will be sending it to me. But, um, if I happen to get a picture of it before Meg edits this, I will send it to her. Um, otherwise maybe we'll just pop one up on the screen from their website. Um, and I also do have this, I don't get any sort of a kickback from this, but if you do want to try any of their stuff, you, um, you're welcome to use the code that is in the description box. Um, like I said, no, no kickback. So no pressure at all to use the code, but you do get, you know, 10 per, I think it's 10% off and the, it doesn't expire either. So, um, the, if you have kids or if you like 
things that are sweet, I will say you would definitely like this stuff. And yeah, it's totally vegan, um, no dairy, um, no nuts, like no, not even like made in a facility with nuts, really safe for all that stuff. So um, yeah, I'll be making a lot more stuff for them um, in the coming months. And I, I have been just like sharing it usually on Instagram when it comes out. So um, yeah, definitely follow me over there if you wanna see uh, the latest stuff with that. And um, yeah, I actually have a few more <laughs> flavor illustrations here for Safe and Fair, but I can't show them to you yet because the work hasn't come out. So um, once it does, I'll share them. And um, yeah, I think that is going to be it for this video. So um, just so you guys know what's coming, because you'll be watching this the first week in December. Um, later this month, we'll be talking kind of more about art supplies and um, I'm, I have been trying to like make myself a little bit more of a schedule so that I can have some like big picture long-term planning just so I don't have to be like making it up as I go with each video because that takes up a lot of mental space. So um, yes, December is kind of gonna be the art supplies month. So we're gonna have a couple of topical videos on art supplies and I guess tools. Um, and then there will be a Q&A at the end of the month um, about art supplies. So uh, if you want to be able to ask questions for the Q&A, um, definitely subscribe to my newsletter. Link to that is in the description box, but that's where we'll be collecting questions. So um, yes, I think that's really, really it. Um, I hope you guys have a great week. <laughs> it's good to be back. I'm glad to be um, making videos again. So thank you for sticking with me for the past month um, when I wasn't making any. Um, all right. Um, yes, you know the deal. You can send me your questions or leave your questions, your comments, whatever. Um, taking my sweet time wrapping this video up. All right, you guys. Uh, I will see you in the next one. Bye.